Alrighty folks, so I want to continue on now. I want to get into a little bit about the equipment uh, requirements that uh, you will, uh, when it comes to uh, air conditioning. And this is going to be just a few of the requirements through the standards that we uh, need to comply by. Uh, but this will, we will, I will be putting together another video just strictly on equipment. So this is going more toward the regulation versus what you know you would use to actually do repairs and stuff like that. So you're going to see some repeat is what I'm trying to say. So let's go ahead. I'm I, I again I'm I'm continuing on with this uh, presentation, uh, slide presentation. So hopefully it'll be beneficial f for you. And let's go ahead and get this thing started. So uh, repair shops must uh, use an approved certified recovery uh, recycling and recovery equipment only um, or recovery only equipment. Now there are, like I said, I'm going to put another uh, video together on the, uh, you know, re, you know what, what, what you would use uh, versus what was required. So uh, another key point, I kind of went over this briefly uh, some time ago in class. I'm talking about that you, know, you have to have a record keeping going on. And this is one of the requirements, uh, repair, you know, repair shops, owners, managers must register the recovery equipment with the appropriate EPA regional office. And the registration form to do this is usually included in the newly purchased equipment. In the past, it hasn't been. But the new equipment, it has to be registered. And I do have a video on that too that we'll, we'll be putting how to and all as we go along. Uh, and then uh, the form looks similar to this. The form is very quick. Um, I'm hearing too that some of the machines you can register right on the machine itself if you have a phone line or a Wi Fi connection too. So as we continue on, adding you know, you know less paper that you might see some of this too so on your recovery only machines uh simply remove you know th this is where you know the combo machines where the cover or recycle is you know and you know charge are different but if you have a recovery only machine it's going to remove the refrigerant from the system and then it, it doesn't really clean anything up uh, this as used, I've seen quite a bit from companies that actually um, are just pulling it out of uh, units and then they take it to a recycling uh, place where they're going to actually clean it up and take the oil and all out of it too. But this is a dedicated machine just to recover it out. Now, this uh, can, some, uh, I've seen some shops do a strictly a standalone recovery a standalone uh, recycling and a standalone charging and this may be uh, what you might have in your shop but it's getting to be more norm to have the, at least a recovery and uh, recharge uh, maybe not the recycle but more and more machines are going to have that recycle and we'll talk about that when it come into uh, changing the filters and and uh, the, the different components inside the recovery machine as we go along um, refrigerant tanks, they must be, uh, you know, tr you know, be DOT uh, you know, compliant, and this is going to be under your DOT 4BA or your DOT 4BW, and usually they're stamped on the tank someplace, uh, saying that they are approved, uh, they have the DOT standards, Department of Transportation standards, and that's what you uh, need to really be looking out for. Um, Safety, uh, yeah, I don't care if you're working uh, on just electric work. I really, really, really want you to start wearing you know, safety glasses. Eye protection, you've only got two sets, you know, two eyes, not two sets, but two eyes. And getting something inside of it, losing an eye, you know, and, you know, refrigerant is very cold and it will definitely try to um, take the, uh, the temp, you know, uh, it'll definitely ruin your eyes if you get it sprayed into your eyes. This just a simple pair of safety glasses will protect you from part of that, you know, problem. Um, but
but if this is not 100% uh, protection. You also, uh, some, some places actually put face shields on with the safety glasses. And don't forget about your hands too. Uh, you, you know, frostbite is a real thing. Now, the other thing that uh, is very important is you want to make sure that you do not breathe the refrigerant and do your best. I and mean, I, I, you know, having uh, you, you know, working on it out in the open air is the best thing. Uh, that way, it doesn't really uh, get you know get you. Uh, uh, well, it, it less chance of it. Let's put it that way. But the other thing to uh, you know, I worry about is shops are confined. You know, they're in a confined area. They have a maybe it's a cold day out and it's a very very cold and they want you know you want to make sure that uh, you know it's warm enough but you're you know you're working on the refrigerant systems and that confined area of uh, the refrigerant will displace the air and you could have uh, possibilities of, su of suffocation too so do not allow refrigerants to contact an open flame uh, geez you know we went back to the r12 you light that stuff, it's phosgene gas, and it's uh, very deadly. Uh, uh, 134A can actually be combustible uh, when mixed with air under pressure in a sealed environment, like I kind of said before. And then, of course, you know, your oils. You want to make sure, folks, that you are wearing gloves. Uh, you want to make sure your PAG oil, uh, it, you know, is encapped. You know, uh, it can absorb moisture. Uh, mineral oils can absorb moisture. Your pearl oils can actually absorb moisture. And it's just like your brake fluid. You want to make sure after you've used it to cap it off, and you put a little bit in, cap it off, not leave it out on the bench, and maybe I'll do it later, kind of thing. So. Do not over, uh, you know, fill the refrigerant tanks. You, uh, folks, too little or too much oil in your, uh, you know, refrigeration systems can cause problems. And it's just, you want the exact amount as best possible. You know, one of the practices that uh, uh, you might see in places, whatever oil that come out, you put fresh oil in. You don't want to reuse the oil either. You want to make sure that you take it out, measure it. That's why you have the measuring devices. Uh, you know, it, the machines will go into, okay, uh, removing oil. You, you want to look to see what's in there. If you see nothing in there, that is a big indicator that there's a problem too. Uh, folks, what can happen too is, you know, somebody does repairs and they don't put oil back in. So make sure that you're, um, you're looking at that when you're doing it. Unless otherwise directed, do not perform equipment maintenance and uh, equipment connected to electric uh, power. Um, I'll get into uh, maintenance on the, uh, the equipment as we go through the semester. So look forward to another slide presentation on that. So one of the things I always did, I don't care what, <laughs> What job I'm doing on a vehicle, I'm always doing a visual inspection. You know, before I do anything, I'm looking for all kinds of signs that it may not be a refrigerant problem. Uh, con disconnected. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, it's, you know, the wires come off the compressor, now it's, uh, com and the clutch is not engaging. I'm also looking for, and we found this in class too, uh, you know, your service parts. Yeah. You, you, this is the primary seal, not the, the, the actual valve inside, but this is where it seals at. You want to make sure when you do take them off, put them someplace that you're going to make sure that you put them back on. So this is very, very important because they can, uh, if it's the caps are off, dirt can get in there. And then when you hook up your machine, dirt gets down in there, it gets between the sealing surfaces, and now you've got a small leak going on. You may even, and I've seen this happen, and I'm sure um, you know, there's other people have seen this happen too. When you take the cap off, you're up, you know, a little bit, almost like a popping noise. Well, that, that seal in that, uh, that actually port is, you know, that actually has been uh, breached. 
So that valve is not seating properly and not sealing. But then again, those, those valves do seat just a little bit too. So be aware of that also. The other thing that I think is really key is before you even recover, uh, you want to identify what kind of refrigerant it is. It's going to tell you if there's a, a mix in it. It's going to tell you if it's a wrong refrigerant. Uh, they're going to tell you how much air is in it, if it's a combustible. This is really, really high, highly recommended. Uh, you can do whatever you feel is comfortable, but I really feel this is really important when you start getting into air conditioning repair. I've seen it uh, uh, at a place where we were actually repairing and uh, the machines at a, uh, an air, air condition shop we were up, and it, you get that contamination in, uh, folks, it goes through the whole machine. So, you, and then you have contaminated, and who knows, you may have contaminated your customer's cars along the way. If you know what's coming into your machine, that's a better fit, okay? So, mixed refrigerants, and, and, and this is where I, I, I really want to say something about cross-contamination, and I'll end this little um, portion of it, and there'll be another video coming up in just a little bit here also. But you want to make sure you don't cross-contaminate by uh, getting uh, adapters to go into the, you know, let's say you just buy an adapter and you, you've been working on R12 and you say, okay, I'm just gonna work on uh, the 134A now, I'm gonna just push on my adapters, which they had back when. I don't know if they still sell them or not, I hope not. But what would happen is that, that stuff in the hose, that R12 in the hose, as soon as you connect it with the 134A, now you've got cross-contamination. It doesn't seem like a lot, but there can be quite a bit of pressure in that hose. All right, so you want to make sure that you don't have a problem because then you can have strange things happen. Um, too much air, uh, cross-contamination and, and gases can cause your pressures to be higher, the temperature outlet to be lower. Now, I mean, less than you would, you would expect and there's possible damage to in the, in, in the AC system. So I hope this was beneficial. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop right now uh, our, my sharing and then we'll get into the next in just a little bit here. So uh, look forward to the next uh, slide presentation. I'm gonna go ahead and stop right now.